Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, Dev Madden. Today's date is Monday the 16th of September 2019 and the time has just gone 9.25 British summer time. Um, it's been a fairly negative start to the European session. Uh, the big news over the past 48 hours was that there was a, a drones were used to strike um, oil fields and production uh, in Saudi Arabia and there's a major disruption caused in the back of that. The initial announcement was the sub of the region uh, of 50% of Saudi Arabia's oil production will be, um, will, will be, will be halted. And then as, as the kind of story unfolded, Saudi Arabia then announced saying that they had um, nearly half of the, of the production that was lost back on stream so things are moving in, in the right direction in terms of getting back to you know quote unquote normality um, but obviously we saw a huge surge in the price of, uh, of oil when oil began trading in the early hour well the very late hours um, of, uh, of Sunday so we made major move to the upside in the, in the oil market um, over the weekend uh, overnight we've also heard from China um, China had fixed asset investment figures out, retail sales and industrial production figures. Um, and the, they, they all came in below expectations. Uh, and the industrial production fe- figures fell and they're the lowest, re- it's the lowest reading uh, in 17 years. So even beyond, uh, even, even, even you know, take us back before the credit crisis and the financial crisis. So um, China's clearly slowing down. And this surge in the price of oil, the timing isn't great, let's be honest. Uh, we have a scenario whereby China, uh, the second largest economy in the world, is slowing down, clearly slowing down. Uh, the trade tests between the US and China, granted, the back end of last week, things were seen to be uh, uh, moving in the, in the right direction. But nonetheless, if you compare it to say, to, say a year ago or two years ago, you know, trade tensions uh, are, um, are um, uh, between the US and China are bad. Even though right in the kind of few days ago, they were looking to be moving in the right direction. Uh, and there's also uncertainty in relation to Brexit. Um, there's talk of recession in Germany. Um, so all of a sudden, a major jolt higher in the price of oil uh, really kind of is, not the, not the, is, is the last thing the global economy needs right now. Uh, so we've seen a negative start to the European equity markets. Um, the FTSE 100 is doing a bit better than its, cal- its continental counterparts um, because the, the surge in oil has set oil stocks like Walter Shell, BP, um, and just given the makeup of the FTSE 100 oil and gas stocks, make up a disproportionately large amount. So the, the, the underlying well, what's, in, what's, what's what's weighing on other markets is actually in, in a way kind of being slightly being counteracted by the fact that uh, a stronger oil price uh, in, in, in a roundabout way benefits the FTSE 200. So take a look now um, at the uh, at the week ahead. First of all, the week ahead article can be found on our website cmcmarkets.com. Under insights and uh, then under news analysis, scroll through that and you'll find this article here. So we've already, we've already talked about the uh, the numbers in China out overnight. The Brexit cycle continues. Um, um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson is going to go to Luxembourg today to speak with the EU's uh, Jean Claude Juncker. Um, we, we we seem to be in a fairly similar situation uh, kind of over and over again, where Mr. Johnson says he believes the 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 the, the, the they're going to strike a deal, but at the same time, no other kind of solutions uh, to the to the withdrawal agreement have have been put forward. Um, so keep an eye on the situation in relation to the news in relation to Brexit. Um, it's all around us, so it's hard not not to not, not to uh, not, not to see it. Um, on Tuesday tomorrow, we have first quarter figures from FedEx. Um, we have UK CPI numbers coming out on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, we also have the final reading of Eurozone CPI. On Wednesday, we have first half figures from Kingfisher. We have the Federal Reserve meeting um, on Wednesday. That's going to be important. Um, seeing as a lot of talk about the Fed cutting interest rates again. They cut, they cut in June. There's been a lot of talk. And especially if you look at say, the, the movement in the bond market, the US government bond markets in the last few weeks, a lot of, a lot of, kind of speculation and belief at the Fed are going to lower interest rates again. But then again, uh, look at the US economy. Unemployment is near a 50-year low. Earnings are good and they're well above the inflation level. And on top of that, the most recent core CPI numbers from the US suggest that demand is strong. So there's there's an argument made saying that the Fed um, shouldn't cut at all or maybe only do a small cut. Um, But, you know, um, chances are, either whatever the outcome is, chances are President Trump will not be happy. He's been calling for the Fed to slash interest rates for a long time, and especially now in light of the European Central Bank uh, announcing its stimulus, stimulus package uh, last week. 
looking ahead to Thursday, we have first half figures from next. We have the Bank of England uh, interest rate decision. Uh, that probably be uh, that's highly likely to be unchanged. Essentially, the, the, the BOE uh, will probably be sitting on their hands and waiting to see uh, how Brexit pans out. Just because they don't, they're unlikely to want to make a make a decision before uh, the UK leaves the European Union. And if things were to go badly, if you know things would go badly in relation to Brexit, when the UK does leave, um, the Bank, Bank of England would like to be kind of have as much kind of you know firepower at their disposal as possible. Uh, on Friday, and, and we've, we we have um, a number out from Canada. We also you know. Wednesday and Friday, we have Canadian retail sales and inflation figures. Uh, so take a look now at the uh, some of the major markets, starting off with the, uh, the FTSE 100. So the broad, broader theme of that the market is uh, it's a still an upward trend. Um, we can take a look at the price action. It's, it's contrary above the 200 moving average. So things are looking fairly good. Um, last last Thursday, the market got to a level not seen since early August. So broadly speaking, it's not. It's not very strong, but it's reasonably strong. And essentially, even even though we are you know we traded lower today initially, um, essentially while we hold above the truly moving average at seventy two eleven, it's a, we, we, we can be confident, we can be a bit more confident that the kind of wider upper trend is going to continue. And if you do press on higher from here and should we break above the uh, last last week's high, uh, we could be looking at it back up towards you know seven thousand four hundred. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at it forward this area here in a seven thousand. 470. It's only really if you have a size of break back below the trinity moving average, because then we'll be looking heading back down towards this zone down here, down around 7,040. Um, Taking a look now, what's going on from Germany? Thanks, partially thanks to the Euro, Eurozone, uh, Euro, European uh, Central Bank update. We, you know, Eurozone equity markets are in better shape than the 1500. So you can see a very steady, impressive rise. Uh, from late August uh, until essentially, essentially last week. Um, last week, the, the, the DAX at a level last seen uh, in, in late July, so things are looking quite positive. Fair enough. You know, obviously, the, the tr tensions are high in relation to the Saudi Arabian situation, so it's not exactly a major surprise. So, equities move a bit to the downside. But if they do, because they're a bit further lower from here, support can be found from around the kind of 12,300 mark, or if you go below that, but as you're from this water day, this, this yacht line here, the water day moving average at 12,112. Um, but the wider upward trend, um, is, you know, is, is likely to remain intact. Um, even if you do, do drift a bit in the near term, support could be found from this region. The market has, has retraced bulk of the, of the ground that was lost between, um, between July and mid August. Uh, so as soon as the bulk of that ground has been made up, it's likely that, that the, kind of, the wider upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, we can look at the 12,600 or up to the highs that we, that we saw in um, in early July in around 12,655. It's only really if you kind of say kind of have a size of break back back below the kind of psychological border 12,000 mark, could then we be looking at heading back potentially down towards this zone down around here on 11,853. Um, take a look now what's going on in the States, the Dow Jones. US markets are in quite good shape. Um, if you look at the, how much the ground that was lost between late July going into um, going into August, nearly all of that ground has been has been been uh, been, been uh, retraced. It's only on Friday people were talking about you know it was in kind of a, within a, within sight of the of the record high, but obviously the Saudi Arabian situation has shaken things up. But nonetheless, and um, it's, the markets are still looking in a quite strong position, so if the wider upper trend does continue, we could be looking heading up towards 27,400, and a break beyond that could take us to no towards 27,500, 600, and so on and so forth. Uh, if we do have, have continued uncertainty uh, in the markets, we could drift a bit lower from here, we could head back down towards this zone down around here, around uh, 26,800. We can see that that area acts as consolidation in the past, uh, and it makes it likely that we could see it be a borders in the future. Um, even if you do, even if you do drop below that, support could be found in this blue line here. The 50 moving average is acts as resistance uh, on on a, and support not to now go. Uh, so it might be important in the future as well. Uh, and that comes into play at 26,584. 
Uh, have a look now what's going on on the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation to the Dow Jones, whereby it wasn't a million miles from its all-time high uh, on Friday. The bulk, you know, it's in very much in the, the wider upper trend is still very much in play. The, the vast majority of the ground that was lost uh, in, in the sell-off from, from late July into August has been recovered. So the upper trend is, is uh, in the market is still looking quite strong, despite the fact that. Um, uh, we're, the market has moved a bit lower this week. Um, so if you can continue in the wider upper trend, we're going to look at re retaking 3,000. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards 3,000, let's say 28 or 30, uh, should, we, should the, the wider upper trend continue. In the near term, I think continue to be kind of uncertain in relation to Saudi Arabia. We could see further ground lost. So we could drift lower from here down towards this blue line here, the fifthly moving average, and that comes to play at 29,400. Sorry. 2,947. 2, we can see uh, on a few occasions it acted as resistance along here and a support back here. So the metric has been important in the past. It makes it more likely it'll be, be important in the future. Obviously, there are no guarantees. Uh, and even if you drop below that, <coughs> support can be found from this zone here, down around uh, the 2,000, not, sorry, yes, 2,900 mark. So we talked about how some of the equity markets uh, have, have declined on the uh, on the due to the kind of uh, tensions in the Middle East, but you know gold has managed to benefit out of it. So gold has been in a massive upward trend uh, for quite quite some time. Um, at the beginning of the month, it hit a six-year high. So that tells you how kind of bullish the gold market has been recently. We did manage to drift a bit lower. Some of the ground was handed back, and lo and behold, the market was already kind of bottoming out and, and um, had already kind of seemed to have kind of bottomed out. Uh, even before the Saudi Arabian situation happened, and uh, gold has managed to kind of pu push higher on the back of that. So if you can hold above this this area here, um, the, the lows of last week are somewhere right around 14.85 odd. If you can hold above the, this area here, kind of 14.85, or the low this this low here, kind of 14.80, it's likely that the wider upper trend is going to continue. As we press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at retesting, uh, heading back up towards the this zone here in around 15.55, 15.57. It's only really if I have a size of break below this area here um, at 1480, because then we'd be looking at actually heading, losing further ground. And we could potentially head back down towards this area here, um, 1453, 14, down to around kind of 1430, this kind of zone down around here. Now, let's take a look at the oil market, the market which the um, biggest story of the day. So here is a daily chart. You can see here, it gives an indication how much of a gap was created when the market opened higher um, last night. And, then actually, and very briefly, the market got up to a level last seen. Uh, that this is on the Brent crude market, uh, last seen in late May. So give an indication of really how, how, how um, really an indication of how bullish the market actually is. But if you just take a look, I think I see a, a five minute chart. You can see the market. This is uh, Friday's close, gap higher, and it has been drifting lower. So we have been given back some of the ground. Now, um, one of the kind of common mis misconceptions in technical analysis is that gaps are always filled. They're not always filled, but they are often filled. So it is possible that the oil market could drift lower, fall back below where the, where this area here, and possibly even actually kind of fill this candle potentially, fill, fill this gap rather, fill this gap uh, before continuing in the kind of before looking to kind of press higher again. So. In the very kind of short term we saw there on the, on the 10 minute chart, we can see that, that the market, massive gap to the upside, but it ha has been pushing lower. So we could look at drifting a bit further lower before we actually, before potentially moving higher again. So we could head back down toward this red line here, the 20 moving average, which is 64 spot 29. We can see on a few occasions it acts as resistance uh, nicely, not so long ago, and therefore it's, it's possible that it might act as support in the near term. And if you do manage to, this wider upper trend does manage to continue, we could be looking at retesting 69 and then kind of heading back up towards 70 and then this area here, 72. Taking a look now at Brent, WTI, similar situation WTI whereby um, the market jolted higher. Take a look at this 10 minute chart. Market opened higher, jolted higher, but it has been pushing lower. So. It's up on the day, but it's given back the gains that some of the gains that it made on the up, move the upside. So a similar situation, we could see the market drift a bit lower, kind of fill in some of this gap that was created, or potentially all this gap that was created, and then look to kind of get press on higher again. So we could drift back down towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average at 57 spot 01, 
or even under the 200 moving average in at 56 spot 24. These areas here we could be looking at retesting in the near term. And then if the wider trend continues, we could be looking at any back up towards the psychologically important $60 mark. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the, you know, the kind of print. The high print that was uh, set last night in around the kind of 63 region. So I'm taking a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So the kind of wider trend is very much to the downside. But we did get some decent support from this area here in around the kind of one spot 0926 area. The market tried on a few occasions to drive the euro lower, but it couldn't just quite, quite get there. We've seen a fairly decent rebound in the uh, in the euro versus the dollar. So if we do look to if we can continue to hold above the kind of the 110 area, we could look at kind of extending the recent gains. And we could look at heading up towards this area here in at one spot 1164. And a break beyond that could take us back up towards one spot 12. 49. But if the if the, mar if the wider if the market turns over on itself and we do have a break back below 110, that could be a sign that the wider downward trend is back in back in back in play, and we could be like a retest in this area here, and then break below that could take us back down towards 109. Take a look now, finally, at the British pound versus the US dollar. So wider trend, very much to the downside, but. This, this candle here looks to me like to be a hammer formation. So there's a market, trove lower, could quite get there. Um, bounced back since then very nicely. Very bullish candle along here um, after what appears to be a hammer formation. The market's been closed and held above 50 day moving average. Uh, and, then we've, uh, and it's managed to have a very, very bullish day on Friday as well. Uh, so we could look at heading back up towards the kind of 126 area on the pound versus the US dollar. But keep in mind, you can't, the, the, the wider downward trend really can't be ignored. So if the market does manage to turn uh, turn over on itself, and if you do have a break below the 50 moving average, this blue line here in at one spot 2277, that could be the sign that the wider downward trend is back in play. And we could be looking at heading back down south of one spot 20. Um, that's all as far as far that's it as far as charts are concerned. Before we go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.